I would like to mention here that some or full content of this session may help you to be a cyber aware, being a cyber savvy, and help you to understand the security concepts while preparing for any cyber security exams like CISM, CISA, CISSP, etc. CISM, you can find this in domain four, which is information security and security management, and CISSP, you can find under security operations. Mitigation. As a full incident response team uh, assembles, they move from the isolation and quartine strategy used by first responder into a full incident mitigation mode. The goal of the the goal of this mitigation phase is controlling the damage and loss caused to the organization by performing a full range of incident containment activity. The nature of these activity will vary based upon the severity of the incident. The National Institute of Standard and Technology suggests six criteria that a responder may use when evaluating a potential containment strategy. First, the responder should consider the potential for damage and threat for resource during the incident. Second, they should evaluate the need of incident preservation and the effect that the strategy might have on the ability to preserve evidence. Third, the responder should evaluate the service availability requirement and the impact of different containment strategy on that service availability. Fourth, the responder must understand the time and resource required to implement any process containment strategy. Fifth, the responder should understand the expected effectiveness of the strategy. Well, well in, uh, the, this approach fully contains the incident or is it likely only a partial fix? And finally, responder must understand the length of the time that the solution will remain in place. Organization can use these criteria to help choose between different containment strategy. The goal is to select a containment strategy that balance the business need of the organization with the security objective of incident response. This is a tricky balance to strike and there is no certain answer. Incident responder will always need to use their best judgment and when possible, seek into seek inputs from the management and other stakeholder. Once an organization begins implementing containment action, the responder must keep in mind that attacker will likely detect the, those action and know the investigator are hot on their trail. This may cause the attacker to speed up activity, destroy evidence or perform other actions that are detrimental to the incident response or the organization business. At the end of a containment process, the organization should be a semi-stable state. Responders should be a confident that the incident is over and there is no immediate danger to the organization. Business operation should be functioning at least on the limited basis. Although they may be, although they may use temporary workaround, everything is generally okay and the organization is ready to move on to the next step of the process recovery and uh, uh, reconstitution. Containment technique. The first minute and hour of a cybersecurity incident are the, in, are the incredibly stressful time and you have conducted some initial analysis and determined that an incident is taking place and you know that there is an intruder active in your network. You have been compromised. That's the fact. And the next step that you take play a significant role in the outcome of the incident. In the next incident handling process, you have moved from detecting, detecting and analyzing phase into containment, eradication and recovery phase. If you have done you your work well in the preparation phase, this is where is payoff. The biggest difference between the in the early phase and this phase is that you have shifted from passive active of detection and analysis into an active phase where you are taking action and response to the incident. Your first priority should be containing the damage caused by the incident. You want to limit the future activity of the attacker 
so that they they cannot do further damage to or to the confidentiality integrity and availability of your system for network there are three primarily activity uh, that you can perform to contain the damage of security incident segmentation isolation and removal segmentation is a crucial network security technique network administrator often use segmentation to divide network into logical segments grouped by types of user or system this is a staple of network security design and is found on almost every network segmentation is also useful in incident response once you realize that one or more systems are compromised you may wish to contain the spread of attack from those systems without altering the attacker to the fact that you have detected their activity to perform the containment you create a new virtual lan called quartine lan and move impacted system to the quartine vlan from there you can set up access control that prevent the compromised systems for from communicating with other system in your network and spreading the attack isolation takes segmentation to next level instead of simply moving the compromised system to a, a different vlan that is still attached to the corporate network compromised systems are moved to network that is completely disconnected from the rest of the network depending upon the isolation strategy used the system may still be able to communicate with each other and are still connected to the internet so that they can communicate with the attackers and finally removal complete disconnect impacted system from any network they are completely unable to communicate with other systems or the internet and the attacker is cut off from the access to the systems this approach will certainly alert the attacker to the fact that attack was detected but it does prevent the compromised system from con from continuing to cause damage on the network incident er incident eradication and recovery once you have successfully contained the security incident you can take a moment to breathe a sign of relief but the work of incident response has only just begun you have managed to contain the damage caused by the incident but now you must move on to the eradication and recovery stage of the process your goal during eradication is to remove any traces of the incident from your system and network if an attacker compromise your account you will need to secure those account if they compromise system or network devices you will need to secure those configuration as well basically you you need to go to your network and remove all or any traces of the security incident so that you can be certain that you have effectively secure your organization the second goal you have during this stage of process is recovery that means that you need to restore normal business operation while the process describe eradication or recovery as two separate activity they are very closely linked the reality is that eradication and recovery activities often take place side by side it's sometimes difficult to say whether an activity you are understanding should be classified as eradication or recovery and frankly it doesn't really matter during many security incidents attacker gain user or administrative level access to one or more systems or devices on your network is often difficult to tell how much access they gain and what backdoors they might installed therefore security professional consider is a best practice to reconstruct any systems that were compromised during a security incident the reconstruction typically consists of rebuilding or reimaging a machine or doing a rest uh, sorry or doing a reset 
to factory default or network devices and applications friends this is again one of the very important concept you have must understood that in case of any compromise you must have to do a factory reset because you never know if there is any traces left all right so performing the construction in this matter in this manner ensure that the attacker didn't leave a hidden backdoor in the system that allow them to regain access once you resume normal operation so factory reset is most recommended now when you are rebuilding a system remember that you may need to build in differently that you did in the past because that was compromised if an attacker compromises a system you should understand how they compromise it if you are missing a security patches make sure that you apply the patch before bringing the system back online if the user account were compromised make sure that they are secure before you go live if you rebuild a system using a pre attack image you will likely to have a same security vulnerability that allow the attacker to fake to take place in the in the first place and might find yourself repeating the incident response process in next few hours only friends sanitization and secure disposals are also important incident response activity you may find yourself needing to dispose of media that contains sensitive information and you should take a step to ensure that you have removed any traces or sensitive information before disposing of media the national institute of standard in technology provide a set of guidance for securing media sanitization in special publication 800-88 this guide include three different activation activities of sanitization technique and it consists simple of writing new data to the device that overwrites sensitive data these techniques are first clearing clearing is effective against most type of casual analysis purging is simple is a similar to clearing but it use more advanced technique that takes longer purging might be might use cryptographic functions to obscure media or disk purging also include the use of technique that apply strong magnetic field to secure overwrite data destruction destruction is the ultimate type of data sanitization sanitization you shred you melt or otherwise completely destroy the media that is totally impossible for someone to reconstruct the data that is contained the downside of destruction of course is that you cannot reuse the media as you would uh, with clearing or purging now here is a flow chart from the nist that can help you make decision about what type of sanitization technique to use it widely used throughout government or industry you begin the flow chart at one of three locations depending upon the classification of information that was on the media then you can walk through a series of discussion point based upon whether you plan to reuse the media or whether that uh, reuse will take uh, place outside of your organization the flow chart then help you make a decision about clearing purging or destroying the media